What is up you guys, I hope you all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to the A Like series. In this case, we're gonna analyze the profile from Becky and Chris. Now you all know Becky and Chris, they're famous YouTubers and Instagrammers, and their style is very desaturated, almost black and white, but with some colors in it, guys. So their style is basically their LUT that they use to edit every single YouTube video, transformed into a preset, which they apply to all their Instagram feed. So you know how this works guys, first we're going to jump into Instagram, check out their profile, analyze it and break it down and then in Lightroom we're going to create a preset resembling their style and apply it to different scenarios to see how it performs. But if you're just interested in the final results and you want to skip this tutorial, you can always download my edit like preset pack which is linked down below. In that preset pack we're going to add this preset alongside the ones from SourceTouch, Cap King, Monaris, Bauklaver, all of those famous Instagrammers and YouTubers. Their profiles that we've broken down in this edit like series are going to be linked in that preset pack. So let's jump into Instagram and analyze their style. So this is Becky and Chris's profile on Instagram. Remember to go and subscribe to their YouTube channel and support them on Instagram. So she's a photographer, but also she has a very good taste for interior design. So she loves making things and doing them to their style, to their black and white style. And him, he's a radiologist, also a photographer. But the one thing that really stands out is that he has or he owns a personal helicopter. So he loves just taking trips throughout Canada to take some photographs or to just shoot a blog or something like that guys. So let's jump into his style. So the first thing that we can see is that everything is completely desaturated. It's very tinted towards the black and white, but still there are some colors to them guys. So one thing that we can notice straight away is that there's basically no blues and no aquas in their images, but the greens, they are there desaturated, but they are there. Now talking about how they take their photographs, they take photographs with their Sony a7R4 for the photos. And also for video, they use the Sony a7S III. Now they do differentiate which lenses are made for photo and which ones they use only for video. Now for photo, they use the 50mm 1.4 for all their product photography. Then they use the 24 1.4 from Sony for to give us that personal look. For example, all these shot from above or when these when you see their legs in there uh, it gives us the pov shot and then for telephoto they use the 200 to 600 from sony now for video that's another story they use the 16 to 35 f4 with internal stabilization and also the 24 to 70 from sony so let's start with her style now i'm not going to concentrate too much on all these interior images they do have the same editing process but we don't see a lot of the colors right here because basically all their remodeling for example, the paint is already black and you can see that from their, from their vlogs or their remodeling tutorials. All of their stuff is already black. It's not like they transformed it in Lightroom towards that dark or grayish color. All, everything is basically black in their house or tinted towards that monochromatic tones. So we're going to jump all the way down to their nature photography or the landscapes. So here we have an image taken with a 24 millimeters 1.4 from Sony. And the first thing that I can notice is that there's no blue, there's no aqua in the sky or in the lake or river in this case. None of that is present, neither there are any purples or magentas. And the greens, they are there, but they're quite dimmed down and desaturated and darkened. That's done in the HSL tabs, remember that guys. Now talking about a bit of the exposure, here we can see that the blacks are raised, but they're also crushed. So there's high contrast, but in the tone curve, the blacks, the last point in the tone curve, we're gonna raise it up just a bit. And then they have some nice contrast, but again, there's nothing completely white in this image. For example, let me just turn off the dark mode on Instagram. And again, here we can see that the sky, there's no part that really looks like the white interface of Instagram. There's no pure white in the image. In all the images, there's no pure white. That meaning that the whites are dimmed down or the highlights are dimmed down as well to achieve a bit more, a bit more information in the highlights or the highlight rule of the Sony. Now here you have Becky and Chris themselves. And one thing that we can notice here is that the blues in the jacket and on the jeans, the dim is very dimmed down. There's really not much blue or aquas in these tones. They're desaturated. And again, here we have this very prominent vignette around their photographs. And that's basically a constant throughout his feed or their feed that there is a heavy vignette going on to emphasize the center subject. Now here again, we zoom in. Now the deer or the little doe is completely normal. There, she has her natural colors. The colors aren't very altered, but the greens are very desaturated. That's the thing that we can see. Again, this little chipmunk or squirrel, I don't know what it is. The emeralds are towards the oranges. It's basically a very simple edit where we desaturate the colors, but we don't affect the tones in general. The light is flashing in the back. Ah, it's very hot, what the hell? Okay, this light is so hot. I don't know, I'm just gonna turn it off for safety reasons. 
Now, one thing that I do notice, guys, is that these images in general, the product images in particular, have a bit of clarity to them. Uh, just adding a bit of punch into the small parts of the image, allowing us to have a bit more texture and contrast in them. Now, another thing that I can see looking at the general picture over here is that the images look towards the bluish tones. And that's a very slight edit done in the color grading part in the shadows, adding a bit of teal color to the shadows, but it's very minimum, guys. So minimum that you basically can't notice straight away. But here we can see a bit in the sweater of Becky. Here we can see a bit of bluish tone in the shadows. And again, um, there's no blue really in the jeans in general. So let's jump into Lightroom and edit this, guys. So I believe that this edit is going to be quite simple, guys. It's going to be straightforward. We're not going to get too deep into the RGB tone curves or the camera calibration. It's going to be quite simple, done in the HSLs. But again, if you want to skip this tutorial, just check out the Edit Like Preset Pack, which is linked down below. So let's jump into Lightroom. So here we have our images, and most of them are taken outside in a very green scenario. Remember that. Um, I want to analyze how the greens and the blues perform in particular. Now the preset will be applicable to interior photography as well. But again, the outside is where we have more dynamic range and more colors to work with. Now this image in here really pops up. It's basically the one that I edited for the teal and orange look, which that video will be linked up here if you want to check it out, is the video from last week. But again, here you have some portraits, some products over here. So let's start off by editing this one of my little dog. So for starting off, remember that I'm not going to touch the white balancing or the overall exposure and contrast. Those are the values that I normally like to alterate for each individual image. So I'm, I like to leave them at zero when I create a preset. Okay, first of all, the exposure. In highlights, what we want to do is just reduce the highlights to a minus 15, just to achieve a bit more information in the skies in the overcast days. Then the shadows, I'm going to pull them up to a plus 10, just to achieve a bit more information in the darkest part of our image. White. I'm going to go with a plus 35 that will create a bit of contrast and the minus 17 on the blacks will add to that contrasty look guys in the presence now texture i'm not going to add it i'm just going to reduce it to a minus 15 but i am going to add clarity to a plus 12. now this value may be incremented depending on the situation for example when we take photos of gear i'm going to add a bit more clarity or products or inside a helicopter if i had one i would add a bit more clarity just to make all the gear really stand out a bit more guys now, vibrance and saturation, I'm not going to desaturate it here, guys. It's very tempting to just desaturate everything from here, but we want to be a bit more selective and we're going to go to desaturate in the HSL tabs. Next, in the RGB tone curve, we're not going to touch the RGB channels, just going to touch the RGB tone curve, create a point in the shadows, one in the highlights over here, and pull the shadows just a bit down over here and pull the blacks up. Remember that we want faded out blacks, so just pull them up and now they're a bit faded. We can see what we've done with the tone curve over here by clicking this button on and off and it just adds this faded look to the images now in the hsl now in hue we're not going to move anything but for precise cases but we are going to desaturate basically everything now red and orange we're basically not going to move red but orange just to desaturate just a bit to a minus 15. now the yellows that control large parts of the green foliage for example the grass normally is in the yellow gamma so we're going to desaturate that quite a bit to a minus 60. Then a minus 70 for the greens to make them dark. And immediately we can see the, how the image is looking more towards their style. Then the aquas to a minus 80. We don't want to desaturate completely because we do have a slight tint in the sky and in the water. Minus 80 again. Minus 80 again for the blues. And we can see that the blue tint in the fur of the little dog has disappeared. Giving us this desaturated look. And then purples and magentas, those two are going to go to a minus 100. We don't have any purples or magentas on Becky and Chris's images. Now in luminous, we're just going to darken some of the colors. For example, the greens, we're going with a minus 15 to make them a bit more dark and moody. And then with a minus 25 to the aquas to make them dark and a minus 30 to the blues. Now these two values that we just alterated will add to that deep blue look in the water, the lakes, anything like that, and also in the sky. Okay, now in the color gradient part, we're just going to add the bluish tones in the overall image to make it a bit colder because right now we can see that the image looks a bit, well, it looks a bit lifeless, guys. It just looks a bit warm. So we're going to add here in the shadows, just going to select the color wheel of the shadows, the hue 215, 215, we can see over here that it's basically in the borders of the blues towards the aquas and then the saturation, we're just going to go with an eight and immediately just clicking this point and off, we can see that the image is a bit more cold it's not blue 
but it's just a bit more cold, resembling that moody look that they have overall in Canada and all those places that Becky and Chris are. Okay, now we're gonna go all the way down to add that vignette. Now I'm not gonna add it too much because the vignette will largely depend on each situation. We're gonna have to alter it. So I'm just gonna add a minus 30 to the vignette, just a bit, and just add a bit of feather. And basically just like that guys, maybe add a bit more midpoint to make it go in the image a bit more, just like that. Now this is the base of the preset, I'm going to save it, but still this image will have to be altered a bit more with the overexposure and the contrast. So I'm going to save it, go to the right palette over here. Now it's going to be in the edit preset pack inside of these guys. Just going to create a new preset, name it Becky and Chris. And remember that we don't want the contrast, exposure and white balancing tools to be saved in this preset. Just going to create it. Okay, now in this image what I would do is just add a bit more exposure just to add that contrast guys and there we have it that's our final result now let's see how the preset performs in different scenarios okay so here we have this image <laughs> that i edited with the teal and orange look just gonna reset it and let's apply the preset okay so this image looks a bit underexposed so what i want to do is just add a bit more exposure and in this case i want the yellows to really pop up so i'm just gonna go all the way down to hsl once again and in the saturation just add a bit more yellow like that and the hue turn it towards the oranges. With Y and we can see what we've done and it's looking quite nice guys. What do you think? We've lost all blues in the jeans and also in the water and just added a bit more desaturation to the yellows to compensate the preset. Now here we have an image of Danny, a portrait. Let's apply the preset, see how it performs. It looks, it's looking very nice guys. You can see that the vibrance of the greens has largely disappeared and looks quite nice. Also we have the warmish tones of the wood in this case, maybe I would pull down a bit of the highlights just so we have a bit more information in the skin tones, but it's looking overall quite nice. Now, portrait of Kevin. Again, let's apply the preset. And overall, just one click, it looks very nice, guys. This is a very overcast day with a soft light beaming down under the wood. So the preset looks quite nice in this situation in general. Now, if we wanted to add a bit more contrast, just pull the contrast up just a bit. And there we have a bit more contrast in the situation. Now here we have an image in a very sunny day. Now this preset is made for moody days or interior photography, but let's see how it performs in a very sunny day. Let's apply the preset. It looks a bit too contrasty. In this case, I'm just gonna pull the exposure up and then I'm just gonna correct a bit of the overall contrast that we just created. That's too contrasty for my case. Just pull down the whites, pull down the highlights just a bit and pull up the blacks. And we, here we have a more compensated and natural look to this image, but still having the desaturation that Becky and Chris have. Now this is a scenario where the preset really performs really well. So just apply the preset where there's a lot of fog and immediately the image looks fantastic guys. Maybe in this case I would add a bit more contrast just to make it a bit more punchy resembling their style. Then we have this image over here, which is going to apply the preset. It's underexposed, so I'm just going to pull up the exposure just a bit. And there, it looks very nice. Finally, we have this portrait of Emmett, my dog. Let's apply the preset. Now it's very underexposed, just pull up the exposure just a bit. And in this case, I would pull down vignette just a bit more to make a bit more emphasis on the subject, pull the midpoint down as well. And then finally, what I would do is just reduce a bit of that warmish tone that the fur of the dogs has, just by pulling down the temperature. Something like that, guys. We can see with Y in our keyboard the before and after. It's looking quite nice. Very happy with those results. Maybe if I wanted to add a bit more contrast, just pull the contrast up to be, make it a bit more punchy. And that's about it, guys. That's my interpretation on Becky and Chris's color grading. Remember that I'm not trying to steal their style. The purpose of these tutorials is for you guys to see how to achieve certain looks so you get more familiar with Lightroom, guys. Anyway, guys, the preset I've just created, I've added it to the Edit Like Preset Pack, which is linked down below. If in case you want to support me, another way you can support me is just liking the video, sharing it with a friend that really helps me out, or just subscribe to the channel. I'm Tony Fuentes. I hope you're all doing well, having a very nice day. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.